Um, you, you moved to California in your, your early 20s, uh, yes. right? And, and the yes. first credit I could find for you is writing for the Richie Rich Scooby-Doo show. Uh, back then, how did you, you found that? Yeah. Yes, I found that. <laughs> yeah. I love that episode. Yeah, um, how, how did you even get that gig? Well, LA? you know, actually, the first uh, one I got. Well, I, I actually before that, I wrote for Hanging In up here, a CBC show, uh, which I got the job because I was living in Los Angeles, and therefore I was a Hollywood writer. Uh, <laughs> I had written nothing, but the rumor right now was a Hollywood writer. He's Canadian. Let's get him. And so I came up and I wrote like six episodes of that with my partner Michael Moore. And then, uh, but we actually we were before we were writing. Uh, no, it's tr not quite true. Before that, we were writing a t is TV uh, animation series called Dingbat and the Creeps. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we wrote all those episodes, all twenty four, whatever it was. Uh, you know, I just I, I met uh, Michael. He's uh, he was uh, the grandson of Mo Howard of the Three Stooges. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and his brother were writing cartoons, and they, but he was very unsuccessful. He couldn't do it. And the, the two of us teamed up, and we, we, uh, we wrote a spec, Dingbat and the Creeps. And uh, we got the job uh, and wrote them all. And then from there, eventually started pitching you know, for, uh, for we, we you know, got jobs doing other uh, uh, TV shows like you know, Richie Rich and Scooby-Doo and things like this, and uh, Plastic Man. And then finally started pitching for some live action stuff like Love Boat and Three's Company. When you land that Scooby Doo gig, do you think that's like that's it? You know, you've, my, you've got it made. Well, no, but yeah, that was pretty cool. But <clears throat> when I when I when I left, because I got quite successful doing lots of cartoons in like a year and a half, and I realized I have to stop doing this because I'm going to get really successful doing cartoons, and <clears throat> because I'd seen other people do it and uh, make a good living at it, and went, oh, oh my God, that's my life. I can't do that. So uh, I left, and I told my kids you know, at the time, Alyssa, my eldest daughter. Uh, that I was leaving cartoons, and she was just like she went in her room and got cried. You know? <laughs> she was just so destroyed that I was leaving it to do, to do like you know live action television. And you wrote for for television for years and years, episodic uh, TV, hundreds, hundreds and years. How is the rhythm of of that different than writing movies? I, I, I it's hard to say because I was a very bad writer for a long time, and I made a really good living as a bad writer, and. Um, and people say, oh, isn't that funny? He's being self-deprecating. No, no, look at the shows. They're really, really <laughs> bad. Uh, it's like, uh, <laughs> there's no self-deprecating involved. Um, the, uh, it, it, uh, I was a very clever writer for years. I, I could turn a good line. I could make, you know, make a joke land. I could set it up. And so I did that for, I guess, through my 20s up into my mid-30s. When I, when I started working on 30-something. And, um, and then that just shook my world uh, uh, because they actually, remember a, a uh, uh, Marshall Herskowitz, I turned in my first script. It was me and Marshall Herskowitz and Ed Zwick, wonderful filmmakers, and one young story editor. Um, and I turned in my first script and uh, they gave it back to me and said, really, really good script, Paul, what's it about? And I said, well, it's about, you know, this, this plot turn here and this great thing happens at the end of act one and act two, this is the thing, and then it all, and this is great. And they said, yeah, no, no, it's really, really clever. It's really good, but what's it about? You know, where does it come from within you? And I said, it's supposed to do that. <laughs> and so I had to look back and go, wow, you know, I have to be talking about my own life? Uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I started digging in and realizing that I had to ask questions about myself, and that was the point where I started actually turning into a writer, very slowly. I mean, I, I was not a smart man. It took many, many years. So the, it was really TV that taught you to, to express your, your own self in movies? Just, yeah, to start digging in and asking those hard questions. And then, then, uh, and then I do it in some, some shows better than others. I mean, uh, you mentioned it's like, you know, the, the, my, the shows I'm most proud of you know, were canceled almost immediately and shows that you know, I did like two weeks work on like Walker, Texas Ranger would last for fucking ever, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, exactly. Excuse the expression, you know, it's like two weeks I worked in the goddamn show, you know? <laughs> Paul Haggis, creator, Walker, Texas Ranger. You know? <laughs> well, you once, you once remarked that the reason you started writing movies was that you didn't want to be remembered as the creator of yeah, Walker, Texas Ranger. I woke Texas up, Ranger. I saw my own tombstone. I w literally woke up to the going morning, I saw my tombstone, and it said, Paul Haggis, creator, Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> and I figured I had to do something to, to erase that. Was that really, I mean, what was the real impetus? Honest to, to God. Really? Honest to God, yeah, yeah. You see a tombstone that says that, see if you don't make Movies, you know, it's like, you know, you know it's like, 